Hello, it's John Bach from BachBiodynamics.com. In this video, I'm going to show you what we did for our first year of farming. We bought a farm property. It was a 10-acre hay field about five years ago, and we've been building on it. We put a house on it and a barn and a well house. And it's been a lot of work. We've had small gardens in the past, and um, those gardens, when you till the soil the constituents of that hay field the different grasses and those kinds of things they really come back they're super super invasive so i'm a big fan of charles dowding and so i wanted to try uh, a little less tillage and i know there's a tractor in the picture and also a bcs but we did some light roto tilling here and um and then we covered the ground in cardboard as Charles advocates in some of his videos and we thought we'd give that a try and see how things grew. One of the things we did was, uh, I mean we've done this in the past in our smaller gardens, is these little cloches here really allow us to um, grow plants. We have a heating mat we put in there to grow things in March to get the seedlings going because it, as you can see the snow is, had just melted. Um, it was maybe the second or third week of March when this picture was taken. So we really need a way to keep things um, warm, to keep the seedlings warm and let, give them a chance to grow before we put them in the ground. So these little cloches, it's amazing how many plants you can something like that. So this was a picture from this winter, 2021, January 2021. I didn't take a picture of the cardboard in the summer. But we ended up getting two cardboard bundles from the local uh, municipal transfer station. They were $100 each. And it's remarkable how much cardboard is there. These things are really compacted in. And when you cut the wiring, um, it's incredible how much cardboard there is. So I apologize, but that chunk of snow, um, we used probably three quarters of one bundle for everything that we did. So it was really cost effective. And it's nice to have that extra bundle because we're going to need that um, for this year's um, gardening and planting just to help with weed suppression. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. We had a surprise snow, not so much of a surprise. I mean, that's what happens when you're up in the mountains. So yeah, you have to be prepared for that kind of weather. And again, it was nice to have um, the cloches with the heating mats. You can see them there. The uh, the heat that they provide in that small area is, I think, better than a greenhouse because you can really um, keep that heat in that area. Whereas if you have a walk-in greenhouse, it, it's more to heat it. And those seedlings, they did quite well. There was a couple hard frosts in March still and even in April. And uh, the plants did, did well, for the most part. So here's how we started. We took some of that cardboard and we just started uh, putting compost on it as we went in order to, um, to anchor it down because if you put a bunch of it down, the wind can blow it away pretty easily. So that's um, the first step. We, we put this compost down and, and then I put some boards on either side. I think our width was about, width was about four feet. And we just kept on going all the way down the line, probably for about 150 feet to those beds. Another thing I did is I'm a big uh, believer in worm castings. So I made, uh, a worm castings bench here you can see it's um you know a raised kind of bed on on legs and you fill that with compost so here's the compost so i put a bunch of compost and horse manure and leaves and stuff like that in there and um, i let it heat up it got quite hot 120 fahrenheit there you can see and um that is too hot for worms that will kill them so I had to wait about a week or so and then I had a parcel delivered with some red wires and I put them in there and they just started to eat their way through that compost and they made great worm castings. So this is my compost pile here. I, I had nowhere near enough compost and I knew that I wouldn't. So 
I use this compost to begin with, but that's one of the things when you're doing this, this is kind of the area we're looking at here. You can see it's quite large and I, I did need um, to bring in some compost. So you can see that to the left by the tractor, that's some compost that was made by a guy local here, mostly horse manure. And then there's my compost pile to the right. And so uh, I just mixed those together and then just kept filling those beds. And um, yeah, it worked beautifully. I was really happy with it. I put down two layers of cardboard. So by this time we're probably kind of, yeah, early April. And I'd started putting stuff in the ground um, early, mid-April. Here's some carrots. I used a uh, four-row cedar from Johnny's Seeds, and um, that worked quite well. Um, the one thing I'd say about these cedars is that you might want to tape off every other um, seeding dimple that you have on the roller, and that way you can um, space your carrots a little bit. My, the carrots were a little bit closely spaced for my liking. Um, spacing was a big problem. I was a little too, um, a little too close with a lot of the plants, and you you lose yield in the long run, especially with things like cabbages when you do that. So that was a lesson learned. Here's um what we had growing in that uh, little cloche or cold frame, and um, so there's some cucumbers in there and some tomatoes. Here's another one here you can see some of the tomatoes in the background there they're a little yellow so even with the heat um it, you know we did have some frosts all the way up to mid-april i think so so you know they they did recover though so i was happy but it's just where we are we had to prepare these are some of the first plantings just some peas that went in the ground and then um i did want to build a greenhouse so we had a couple these are automobile um, tents that you can buy. And I had my, I have two tractors, a couple old tractors I had under there and the wind had just shredded everything. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to take it all apart. I'm building a barn this year where the tractors can live. And I put um, just some plastic on top of it. It was really cheap. The whole thing was 50 bucks. Um, I know from Johnny's seeds, you can get pipe vendors and make more, uh, rigid structures but i was happy with this i just plywooded both ends of it and um it's been great here's uh, kind of what it looked like and we did the same thing we just covered the whole inside with cardboard um didn't till anything up thought i'd try it with just letting the grass hopefully get ch choked out and put the compost on top so that's the process here and we just kept going and that's kind of the finished product um was really happy with it and and then again we decided um just to try see how it worked i didn't mow anything here and i didn't till anything the beds um, in the foreground were lightly tilled and it was the same process putting cardboard down but here i just took cardboard and put it right on the thick grass and just to see what would happen same thing, covered it up, and um, I think there's some cabbages we're putting in there. I think by this point we're kind of, again, mid to late April. And here's the process. We, you know, I was thinking about what crops I'm going to plant, and so there's some kale here. So did some beds and then planted the early stuff that you can put in that's a little bit more uh, cold hardy and then did some more later on for some of the things that i still had um, in the cold frame like the tomatoes and um, the squashes and that kind of thing and so yeah this was this just kept on going and um, here later on this is probably mayish by now we're putting in i think a zucchini probably there you can see it was a little bit root bound because um, they stayed in the cloche a little bit longer than i wanted them to it was a cold spring it really was it can get really hot up here it's a place with a lot of extremes it gets really cold in the winter down sometimes to minus 30 uh, celsius but it can get up to the mid 30s quite easily in the summer so put a drip line down and i also put um on top of the we did the cardboard the compost and then we put down landscape 
fabric, um, both for weeds, but mostly for heat too. And uh, that's kind of what that looked like with the zucchini there. And that worked really well. Um, spacing, you know, that was a big takeaway from this year. You look here and you go, that's pretty neat and tidy. And um, you think you have enough space, but when those plants start growing, it's amazing how much they fill in. And I would have increased my spacing. I think with the zucchini, I was every two feet. I'd go at least every three feet this year. Same with the squash, um, you know, cabbages too. I did a bunch of cabbages way too close together and they don't form heads. I had some beautiful cabbages, but some of them didn't form heads. And another big issue was the grass growing in on the sides. And that started creeping under and started coming in the beds. And uh, on our hay field, um, it became an issue. And so I can show you that in some later pictures. Here's the worm castings. So this is um, the worm castings bed that I had made. And then you can see there's a hole uh, at the front and it's sloping downward. And so this was about a month or two after I'd originally introduced the worms. And then you just water it. And then this beautiful black worm castings. And then I think I did a one to four mix. I'd roughly fill about a quarter of the watering can up. And uh, then I just watered the plants. That was um, a big part of our fertilization regime this year. And here's some, I think it's arugula, some, something like that. And um, this is some more planting out using a dibber like Charles does and spacing. Really like that method. Worked really well. And um, we also put up uh, some sprinklers. So on one side we had sprinklers which was more overhead for things that could tolerate getting their leaves wet. And then uh, on the other side, we had drip lines for things like squash and tomatoes that um, don't like to get uh, their leaves wet and can get moldy if you do that. That also worked really well. Just uh, some more planting here that I was doing. There's a bean. We put that in. And we had a bit of a cold snap after that. So the beans kind of they like it warm, but they did okay in the end. And here we, because it's a hayfield, we have so much grass and so much uh, alfalfa, which is high in nitrogen. So I mowed, and then we have a, a, a leaf collector, which is one of those models that you put behind a lawn tractor, and it's amazing how much they pick up. So it's a, it's a leaf sweeper. I don't have a photo. Maybe I can show it in a, another video, but it's amazing how much material they pick up in a short period of time so we were able to collect a lot of mulch and we just started to uh, mulch the beds again for um, weed suppression because the compost was that i bought was a little bit weedy which was a bit of a disappointment i had to uh, i had to do some hoeing so um, yeah we put a fairly thick mulch on and it's amazing it helped the plants quite a bit it also helped for the wind as well especially some of the smaller seedlings because it can get quite windy up here and um, you know if you have just their leaves sticking out um, it helps them it, it's it's kind of a little break and yeah so here's the hoeing out you can see that the compost did have some weeds in it so I had to do some hoeing out before these is mostly parsnips I think there's a couple of the flower there I don't know what that is maybe a marigold in with it um, but there was some weeds, and so they had to be hoed out. It wasn't that big a deal. Um, I probably should have got it to it a little bit earlier. Um, but I was building a barn also at the same time. So things kind of a little bit. But there's the beds mulched, and you can see there we were staking some peas. These are watermelons. Um, they did not really work. Um, we had run out of tarp and so uh, of the landscape fabric and i just had some old lumber tarp around so i tried using that i think it does the same thing it's not a big deal but you know we did get a couple of melons but they weren't until october and there's really no point in having melons in october when it's starting to get cold so in addition to just having the black landscape fabric i would also in the future add probably a fleece over top of this just to give them that extra heat and also grow an f1 hybrid um, you know i always want to save seeds but it's hard to save seeds for melons and um, with that 
F1 bigger. You can buy organic F1 hybrids. You know, you have uh, a shorter window um, growing time, which maybe by then, you know, when you want to eat melons in August, you could you could have them. So I'll probably try that this year. There's some leeks there, heavily mulched. They did quite well. Here's the greenhouse. So again, it's um, you can see the compost is weedy down in the foreground there. Things slipped away a little bit from me in the compost or in the greenhouse. I'll admit, um, I was yeah really busy with the barn and getting that built and making permit deadlines and that kind of thing. But also spacing was an issue too. I space things way close together here, so that's something you should watch for. I think when things are properly spaced obviously you're going to get more yield and here's the zucchinis starting to grow yeah we had tons and tons of zucchinis this year too many i would say carrots from that four row cedar they're coming along quite well again mulched and yeah here are things a little weedy there's some potatoes uh in the background there um you know, this year I'll have more of a chance to get on with things, but you can see that grass on the edges, and some of that is couch grass, and I want to talk a little bit about that at the end. It's it's so hard to deal with. And again, uh, probably towards the end of the season, this is probably we're hitting July, maybe not the end, end of the season, but mid-season, and things are starting to to grow and form up, but it's amazing how thick it gets you can see from the spacings earlier how much room it looked like there was and there's some weeds in here but a lot of that is just how dense these plants are and how big they are these are mostly zucchini and there's some squash in there and you know it started to get really tight and that would be something i would definitely change next year is improve that spacing it's a nice cucumber we had tons and tons of cucumbers we actually sold some cucumbers locally there's um Facebook marketplace here where we can sell them some things and our neighbor has a small she's just starting off with a a farmer's market and we sold quite a bit of stuff to her so it was nice to sell some produce on our first year here's the carrots we had, along. We had nice carrots these are some smaller ones but we had tons of carrots uh, this year which was great turnips were great Cabbages. We had some cabbages. I would have liked more. Like I said, I put some of them too close together. Here's some bugs are eating these. There's the uh, cabbage moss here, and um, I think in future I would uh, put a fleece on top of them as well, as Charles does to keep them out. Some good beets. Uh, story with these beets. So I took these pictures here, and there's a little spider on that beet. Um, we had great beets and um, started picking a few of them but left most of them in the ground wanted to pickle a lot of beets and then uh, came out it was late august and um, started pulling the beets up and they were all eaten so we have some moles up here a lot of them and they had just eaten everything so i lost that crop which was too bad but i think part of that too is when a crop is mature you should pull it out and so i'd probably do a little bit more um, sequential planting have a quicker, uh, earlier maturing beet and then a later maturing beet. Um, and that way you, you have a constant, not a constant flow, but you have a few times in the year when you're harvesting things like beets. Zucchini, we had an insane amount of zucchini. And that's the thing too, they, the pack, um, I don't know, there's maybe 20 seeds in there and almost all the plants germinated. And so I, I, I don't like to waste. And so we put, all of them in and we just couldn't eat all the zucchini we again sold quite a few zucchinis to our neighbor with the farmers market but I, I had to throw a lot of them out probably 30 or 40 zucchini and I fed them to the worms and that's another thing worms love zucchini I'll show you that in the end and here's um, this is uh, a squash and um, you know, the vine's grown out into the field so it's got grass below but that's not actually on a bed that's just out in the field when the vine was growing more zucchini there's a uh, part of the zucchini hall so these are some of the pictures of the harvest and um tons of acorn squash garbage can full and another tote full of that and we have so much now in storage 
which was really the main thing. We sold some of our produce, but we also have a lot of it in cold storage, which should last us all the way through spring, which is called the hunger gap. You want you want your produce to last beyond just you know the winter. You you need to kind of get it to a point where you have food to eat before you your first early harvest comes up, which for us is going to be at least the end of April. So I think we'll be able to do that. Lots of carrots. Um, they're in pretty good shape, but some of them are split. You can see there's some rough ones in there. And there's some cabbages. And that's how I stored the carrots. We have a nice cool basement, so we put those in there with some sand. Still have tons of those left here in, what is it now, mid-January. And these potatoes, I mean, we had gigantic potatoes. It was unbelievable how big these potatoes were. There's a hammer there for reference, and that's a full-size hammer. Um, just enormous potatoes. It's beautiful. Here's the couch grass, and that's, you know, one of the things I want to do this year is to fill in the walking paths because this couch grass, these are the roots. They, they, you can see the little sprouts in the bottom, and that's new grass coming up, and uh, they just work under the soil and then come up, and once they get established, they're really hard to get rid of. So, I think. You know, this year with all that extra cardboard, we'll start covering the walking beds. And it's amazing. The cardboard, you probably have maybe three or four months with the cardboard, or five months maybe, and then it decomposes. And then stuff will start coming through if it's not dead. For us, it was dead, most of it, but it's right on the edges where stuff starts creeping in. And you have to be really vigilant about that. And here's the zucchini. These uh, worms love zucchini. So, you know, if you can't give your zucchini away to your neighbors, you just feed them to your worms because they love it. And here we are. This is the end. This was October. And I, again, I did the BCS tillage because things were pretty weedy. Um, you know, the barn, you can see the barn there in the background. It's that silver. It was a metal barn. I had to finish that and uh, took up so much of my time and... You know, had some permit deadlines and that kind of thing and had to do it. So uh, next year I'm going to have way more time just to really keep things under control in the garden. And like I said, putting cardboard in between the rows. So this is where we were as of the fall of 2020. And I also put down a bunch of rye and some hairy vetch. And that's another big question for me because I like the concept of green manuring especially over a large area you know what kind of tillage practices can you have when you have a bunch of rye which is a very dense crop coming up and if you've watched Ray Archuleta's film which I highly recommend it's called Undercover Farmers um, these guys put rollers in and they they roll down crops but they're growing fairly large crops they're growing corn and um, soybeans and things like that and my question is how can you incorporate green manuring into a no-till system for small seeds like carrots um, like lettuce things like that something I'm going to look into um, maybe still use the BCS I don't know so we'll see what comes up because there's a lot of rye and vetch in these beds and we'll see how those come up so it was a successful year and I'm happy and I hope you really like this video. If you have any questions or comments, um, yeah, you can uh, just send a comment below. And thank you for watching. I also publish a biodynamic planting calendar that follows the rhythms of the moon. It's a research calendar. If you're interested in this, you can get it from my website at bachbiodynamics.com. And this year for 2021, there's a few research trials that are very well defined. And uh, I would be very appreciative if you're interested in participating. Thank you for watching.